Sweet. So now we'll have a look at the solver. So again, we're not going to go into a, a huge amount of detail. This is going to be enough just to get you guys started. Uh, if you want to do a lot more afterwards, it's best to ca have a chat with us. Um, but so CFD, you know, on the on the high level, it's an iterative solver. It will initialize a solution with some sort of velocity field. It will then solve those Navier-Stokes equations, checking for conversions criteria. And then when it's achieved it, it will return the results for you to analyze. For our simulations, it's advised to use a pressure-based solver with a pressure-based, sorry, with a coupled solver. So for, for compressible flow, the, sol the coupled solver can be used. Instead of solving the variables for momentum in the x, y, z, um, it will solve everything in one large matrix and correct for the simulation afterwards. This can lead to faster convergence um, compared to the segregated solver with the issue of taking up a little bit more RAM. So we can see on the right hand side we've got the, let's switch over to the pen, sorry. So we've got the scheme, we've got the pressure velocity scheme that we're using. We're going to be using a coupled solver um, and we've got a couple other spatial discretizations in there as well. Right. Um, and then now within the solver as well, there's an artificial time step um, which is used, which, can, which is called the current number. It's used to calculate the average flow characteristics. Uh, the default is around 200, but it can be reduced around 10 to 50 if you've got issues with convergence. So in general, the lower current numbers can make the solution a little bit more stable, but it means it will take a little bit longer to actually solve. What, what it's actually trying to do is that it's trying to understand um, what time step needs to be used in order to capture the flow. So it's again, let's go back to our simple example of flow in a pipe. Now if we're taking this small volume, if we were to give it some sort of inlet condition, we can expect real velocity to be fluctuating with time, looking back, you know, remembering back to that turbulence um, model. Uh, that picture before, sorry. So by trying to solve the steady state, we're actually looking for the time averaged. So again, we've got the instantaneous, so what's happening in real life, and we want to figure out exactly what the average solution would be. So what we need to do is that we need to take time steps, and the solver, the current number allows us to take a certain amount of time steps in order to average that flow out. Again, just like anything, if we're not taking enough time steps, it just means we're not going to be sampling the data enough. What we're going to be doing afterwards is that after we've set everything up, we're going to start to run the solution. We're going to see residuals, which is what you can see on the screen at the moment. So these residuals are a function that allows you to understand the error between each successive iteration. Generally, you're looking uh, for the global residuals to drop by an order of three magnitudes. Uh, the residuals may flatline or exhibit periodic patterns. Um, periodic patterns are evident of strong transient flow and vortex shedding as well. What's also important is to have a look at your monitors. So it's important to have a look at some sort of force monitor or um, something, you know, like flow rate or something like that, whatever you're interested in. In our particular case, it might be lift or drag or seal and CD. So we can monitor CL and CD here, and we can see that even though the residuals might take a little bit of time to resolve, the monitors, you know, have pretty much resolved within 100 simulations, um, 100 iterations, sorry. It's important to keep in mind that when you look at the global residuals, those are global residuals of the whole mesh domain. So you're looking at the worst cell fluctuating around that domain. So you might find though that the worst cell might not be as close to the car as you think. And you know, lift and drag around the wing have actually been resolved. All right, so let's just exit this real quick. And let's go back to the simulation and set that up. 